You shall be stronger by now. Healthier by now. And he helps your God this morning will last till the end of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Healing, health, permanent. Amen. The set time to begin to run. We are going to run. Amen. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? If you are not there, I don't want to ask how many of you are not there because I don't want to put you on. You know, public stand that you are not there. You must get those uh, messages. By the way, those messages came from Aqua Ibom. I can't begin to tell you the story and the, and the miracles that took place. And then from Port Harcourt, and then from the headquarters here this morning, it was great. Somebody help me shout, it was great. You must listen to that message again. Try and get the messages and listen over and over and over so that the thing will not just pass over your shoulder. It will get deep into you and you will never be the same. Yeah. Are you ready for tonight? Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight for our workers' meeting. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. What would have thought that because of the weekend revival that some will not be here but your people are here i'm asking lord you bless our faithfulness in jesus name i pray lord you keep us awake and let the power the strength and the zeal of the almighty god begin to walk and continue to work in every life in jesus name impact our lives and lord set us in motion to do what we ought to do and to do it fruitfully and purposefully in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray we're looking at John chapter 2 and I'm reading from verses 16 and 17 John chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 and said unto them that sold those Take these things hence. Make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. It's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was zealous he was earnest he was passionate he was self-forgetting in doing his father's will self-forgetting in defending god's glory he saw them in the temple and they were pulling down the glory of god and so he went into action and his zeal ate him up consumed him in defending god's glory in upholding God's standard, he knew that those religious people had let down the standard and he was there to lift up and uphold the standard. He was zealous in obeying God's word. The word of God was precious to him, important to him, and he was earnestly defending that same faith and that same word in obedience. He was earnest and passionate in cleansing God's temple, in maintaining holiness in God's house, passionate, zealous, in teaching the whole of God's truth, passionate and zealous, standing alone for righteousness. You see here, he had to stand alone. He had to cleanse the temple alone. He had to drive out those people alone. Many times when you look at Jesus Christ, those who draw the pictures of Jesus Christ, they draw him as if he was weak, as if he was so meek, as if he could not, he could hardly walk. They, they, drew, they draw his picture as if he could hardly take his stand and say, hey, that is not right. They, they, they draw him as if he said, you know, so meek and just push him and he falls down. Not like that. As you look at the uh, picture of Jesus there and you look at the stand of Jesus Christ and you look at the performance activity of Jesus Christ there, he was strong. 
he was uh, courageous and he was firm and all alone by himself pushed all those things away and drove them away standing alone for righteousness i pray that that mind of christ that spirit of christ will be in every one of us single-handedly if you have to you will stand for the lord and you'll be zealous like the lord in jesus name from the beginning to the end he was zealous in all things pertaining to god he did not calculate he did not capit uh, capitulate he did not consider his acceptance will people accept me and will they honor me will they appreciate me if i go this way and oppose the normal usual thing that everybody has accepted is the norm if i oppose that would they accept me it was not thinking of his ease of the praise of men he did not bow to the prevailing tradition you see people are compromising what they do is they bow to the prevailing uh, tradition he did not yield under pressure to avoid being misunderstood everything has been going on they have been selling this sin and they've been in the temple like this for such a long time if anybody comes now and he destroys what they're doing they'll think it's eccentric they'll be asking what's wrong with this man he didn't think of that he was not yielding under pressure to avoid being misunderstood and he did not submit his commission to religious expediency you see there are people we have the commission here is what the lord has committed into our hands and then they are saying but if i carry out the commission the way the heavenly father wants me to carry out the commission it is like you know i will not it will not go down well in the minds of the people therefore they submit their commission but jesus christ did not surrender his will to the desires of the people so he could have an easy life the people that think too much of easy life they want everything to be calm they don't want trouble they don't want any conflict and they don't want any contention and because of what they're looking for i want to have life easy i want to have everything going well because of that they surrender their will to satan to society and they surrendered their will to the opposers of the truth but jesus christ never did that you will not do that he did not quit the battlefield fighting to rescue souls in bondage you see preaching the gospel it's like you go to the battlefield and you're rescuing those souls from the hands of the devil sometimes it's going to be tall sometimes it's going to be hard sometimes the devil is not going to make it easy for you to snatch those people from the very gates of hell but jesus christ did not quit i will not quit i said i will not quit you will not quit in jesus name he didn't give in he didn't give up under the influence of ignorant voices of disciples and relatives you see some of his disciples they were so ignorant and they said you will not go to the cross you will not pay this price you will not sacrifice and even his relatives came and they said something is wrong with him they wanted to pull him out of what he was doing but he didn't give in he didn't give up under the influence of those ignorant voices of disciples he did not relate though opposition was growing by the day you know there was opposition yesterday and you were saying that everything will get easier today the opposition was growing and yet he did not relent because of those areas of opposition the zeal of god's house consumed him consumed all earthly considerations as you look at uh, jesus christ you see he fulfilled scripture we're looking at psalm 69 in psalm 69 you see what had been reaching concerning him and what has been reaching, reaching concerning us too psalm 69 i'm reading from verses 8 and 9 i am become a stranger unto my brethren and become somebody they can't understand because of the way he did the father's will i have become a stranger to my brethren an alien 
unto my mother's children. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. You see that? Uh, that was uh, because he was going to do the will of God. It had been written before he even came that that was going to happen. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Psalm 119, Psalm 119. I'm reading from verse 139. Verse 119. Verse 139, it says, My zeal has consumed me. My zeal has consumed me. Any other consideration? Any other thinking? Any other thing that is inside me? The zeal of the Lord came in there like fire and consumed everything because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget the precepts. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, when you are preaching, and then the people you are preaching to, if they look down on you, if they belittle you, if they reject what you are saying, uh, and if they look down on you and say, what you saying after all, and they kind of uh, misinterpret what you are teaching, and uh, they despise you, then you feel so ashamed, uh, the people don't understand, they think I am this way, I am this way. The Sami said, no, it's at such a time, you ought to maintain your zeal. He said in verse 141, I am small and I'm despised, yet do I not forget that precepts, that righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish are taking hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. Troubles will come, trials will come, temptation may increase, but it says, even in the midst of all that, I'm still going to do your will and keep your commandment. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We've seen that it was said of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. The zeal of thine house has consumed me. Now how about the disciple? Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 25. It is enough that the disciple be as his master and the servant as his Lord. That's what is expected of us. What we see of Christ, the zeal. What we see of Christ, the passion. What we know of Christ, the earnestness in pursuing the will of God. It says we must be like that too. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 40. Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 40. It tells us in verse 40, The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect, everyone that is well trained, everyone that is well taught, everyone that has Christ, the mind of Christ, inside him shall be as his master. What, is, what was said of the Lord must be said about each of us. The zeal of thine house, the zeal of thy calling, the zeal of thy commission, the zeal of the ministry has eaten me up. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see any defilement coming in the church building, follow his steps, wipe it out. You see anything that is not comely coming into the midst of the children of God, stand against it. You see anything you know, that is going to pull down the banner of truth and the standard of holiness in the church of the living God, no matter where it's coming from, pull it down. And do like Jesus Christ, he left us an example that we should follow his steps. You will follow his steps. 
His grace will be multiplied in every one of our lives. We will stand for the standard of the word and for the standard of worship in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. amen. In first John, first John chapter two, first John chapter two, reading from verse six, it was said of the Lord, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. It tells us now, if we're children of God, if we abide in Christ, if we're the people of God, it says, He that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk. Even a sea world that means then is left an example for us, and we're going to follow that example. I will follow that example. I said, I will follow that example. Let me read a familiar verse of scripture, Jude chapter 1, verse 3. Jude chapter 1, verse 3, beloved, when I gave all deviance right unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. And to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The zeal, the zeal that you are earnestly, passionately, wholeheartedly, sacrificially contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Tonight, we're looking at the message the courageous zeal of saints and servants of God. The courageous zeal of saints and servants of God. Zeal, courageous zeal. Zeal, zeal that has conviction. Zeal, constant zeal. The zeal that is always there. Whatever may happen around you, whatever opposition you may face, Whatever challenges may come your way to understand, you must not lose your zeal, earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints, the courageous zeal of saints and servants of God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the consuming zeal of our unswerving Savior. The consuming zeal of our unswerving Savior. Point number two, the courageous zeal of unrelenting saints. Unrelenting saints, the saints of God, no guilt in their heart, no condemnation in their heart, no weakness in their soul, no weakness in their backbone. The courageous zeal of unrelenting saints. Point number three, the conquering zeal of unconquerable servants, servants of God, preachers of the gospel, pastors in the church, leaders in the ministry, unconquerable, the conquering zeal of unconquerable servants. Point number one, the consuming zeal of our unswerving savior. We're coming back to John. In John chapter two, Verses 16 and 17. This is what it says about our Lord. It says, And said unto them that sold the doves, Take these things hence. Whatever the angry looks of uh, those people that were selling, because they've been selling for such a long time within the temple, and nobody challenged them. The Pharisees never challenged them. Sadducees never challenged them. And the religious leaders just, just passed by and they saw that thing as if they didn't see. And they just accepted it. The people are not going to obey. They are not going to listen. So if they are not going to listen, why waste your prayers? Why talk to them? And they just passed by. But Jesus Christ came forcefully. And he came zealously. And he came earnestly. And he said, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered when they saw the word of God demonstrated. When they saw the truth of God demonstrated, practicalized. They remembered it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Has eaten me up. Look at Second Kings chapter 10. Second Kings chapter 10, as we look at the scriptures, 
and we see what the other people, what other people did in the scripture. You look at the church of God today and whatever is not of God, whatever does not go, go along with the glory of God, does not go along with the doctrine of righteousness and holiness, you will rise up with strength. You rise up like somebody having backbone and you will stand against it. You will not just smile at it, you will not just befriend the people who are bringing corruption and they are bringing defilement into the church of the living God. Second Kings chapter 10, reading from verse 15. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonada, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he, and he saluted him and said to him, ah, Is thine heart right with my heart? As my heart is right with thine heart. The people who are going to cooperate with us in ministry. And the people who are going to join hands with us in uh, bringing righteousness and holiness, maintaining righteousness and holiness in the church, there must be people whose hearts are right with us. There must be people who understand the way we're going. And there must be people who are ready to leave everything behind and go with us in the direction we're going. He said, if it be, because the answer it is, if it be, give me thine hand and he gave the hand and he gave him a son and he took him up to him in the chariot look at this verse 16 and he said come with me and see my zeal for the Lord come with me and see my zeal for the Lord there is something in the land that God hates let's hate you together there's something in the land God wants to destroy Let's destroy together. There's something in the land that God is not happy with. Let's go and remove it. Let's destroy it. Exterminate it. Wipe it out. It says, come and see my zeal for the Lord. And he made, he, he made him ride in his chariot. You can read the story by yourself later, but look at verse 26. In verse 26, and they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burnt them. And they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a drudge house unto this day. Look at this, verse 28. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Thus Jehu, one man, one leader, one minister, one passionate person, he single-handedly, when, when others joined along with him, he destroyed Baal from the whole nation. If he could do it, we say today we are saved, we say today we are sanctified, and we say today we have the power of the Holy Ghost, evil will not remain in the house of God. Bastachi, in Bastachi, he tells us here, Bastachi, and the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes. That was what the zeal did. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and has done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart. He did according to all that was in the heart of the Almighty God. Because of that, the children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Any amen? amen. Second Chronicles chapter 31. Second Chronicles chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 21. Second Chronicles. Chapter 31, reading from verse 21. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. You bring your heart into the work of God. You bring your mind into the work of God. And you bring the passion, you bring the zeal into the work of God. And you say, we're going to do it like Jesus did it. As Jesus manifested zeal and passion 
for the work of the Lord? What, was everybody happy with him? Let's look at this, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? That's where some people collapse. Do you know people are not happy with you? Do you know they don't appreciate what you emphasize and how you drove those people out and the things you say and the parables you give and the examples, illustrations you make because they think you're talking about them and they're not happy at all. Do you know that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? Or did Jesus say, oh, go help me tell them I'm sorry? You'll never be sorry for preaching the truth. You'll never be sorry for cleansing the house of God. You'll never be sorry for offending an adamant sinner who does not want to go the way of righteousness. If you say you're sorry, you're compromising. You'll never compromise. Look at verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted, tell me, shall be rooted up. Those who are offended at holiness shall be rooted up. Those who disagree with the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, they'll be rooted up. It says, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Jesus Christ was zealous. Jesus Christ was passionate. Jesus Christ manifested the zeal we all should manifest. John chapter 4, reading from verse 34. John chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. The work is not finished. Keep on doing it. The work is not finished yet. You cannot be weak now. You cannot turn back. You cannot bend low. You cannot quit. It says, my meat is to do the will of, of him that sent me and to finish his work. We'll continue till we finish. I will continue till I finish. John chapter 6, reading from verse 38. John chapter 6, verse 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He always kept that in his mind. He always kept that focus all the time. He said, my will is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I came down from heaven so that I can do the will of my heavenly father. He got to the temple and he saw all the rubbish. He saw the confusion, he saw the defilement, and he saw that holiness had gone out of the door. He saw that defilement, everything evil, had now come in and was asking himself, what's the will of my father? How does he want his house to be? How does he want holiness and righteousness in his house? He said, I know this is what he wa wants, and went ahead and he did it. He said, for I came down from heaven for this same purpose, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I pray that will be said of you. Look at John chapter 8, John chapter 8, reading from verse 28. John chapter 8, verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself cleansing the temple. I do nothing of myself preaching righteousness. I do nothing of myself calling the church, calling the whole people to righteousness and holiness. I say nothing of myself. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always, I do always those things that please Him. I pray that will be true of you and true of me. John chapter 17, 
We're reading from verse 4, John chapter 17. Reading here from verse 4. It tells us in verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. Cleansing the temple, that's glorifying God. Preaching the truth, that's glorifying God. Driving away all those people that made the house of God merchandise, that's glorifying God. Saying, there'll be no selling. Saying, there'll be no confusion. Don't turn the church to a marketplace. That's to glorify God. And then making the people to hear the word of God that leads them to salvation and leads them to holiness and leads them the way to heaven. That's glorifying God. And he said, looking at his ministry from the beginning to the end, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Amen. The work of the Redeemer. I finished the work that you have given me to the work of a reformer. If you're going to do anything important in the church, you must be a reformer. If things are going wrong, if things are upside down, a reformer will set that thing right and say, No, carry that thing out of there. Take that thing away from there. The attitude of people, the understanding of people, the comportment of people, the prayerfulness of people, the consecration of people. If things are going down, the reformer is to come and say, this must go right and every one of us following the lord jesus christ you must be a reformer will be reformers in jesus name and then will you glorify the lord when you manifest that zeal that the lord himself has commanded us to manifest when we're talking about zeal zeal is like fire fire consumes zeal consumes zeal is like fire fire consumes chaff and zeal consumes self there'll be no self-consideration and there'll be no self-centeredness there'll be nothing like you know if i go this way if i preach the word if i stand for the truth what will my friends say what will my relatives say what will my fellow believers say fire consumes chaff and zeal consumes self fire consumes actually material zeal consumes earthly consideration earthly consideration will not come into your mind what's the will of god what's the glory of god what's the directives of god what's god telling us to do fire separates the draws from the gold and zeal separates parasites from the precious you see the church is precious and a child of God, every minister of God is precious. If there are parasites that are just leaning on you and they are sucking out the strength of the church and they are sucking out the vitality of the church like, para, like parasites and they are, they are destroying the precious things in the church, fire will separate the parasites from the precious. Fire removes cold and zeal removes coldness you know if somewhere it's cold and you light the fire and you kindle the fire that fire will remove the cold the same thing with zeal zeal removes coldness lukewarmness and apathy fire is real and it's distinct from all imitations if it is something that is burning and it's just a kind of cosmetic not real fire you put your hand there it will not burn but if it's fire, fire is real and can be distinguished from all imitations. Zeal is real and zeal is free from pretense or hypocrisy. Fire is no, not by its effect. Fire is burning. How do you know it's fire? You see the effect. It will burn whatever it is that is inflammable. And zeal is recognized in its efforts. Fire drives the engine. In the olden days, uh, you know, when they used to use uh, charcoal uh, to, uh, to build fire so that the engine of the train will move, it was fire that will move that engine. And fire zeal drives man into ministry irresistibly. If you really have zeal, you'll not say, well, I'm still thinking of ministry. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. That zeal will move you and drive you forward and from this day the zeal of the lord will drive you forward in the ministry in jesus name jeremiah jeremiah chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 9 
Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 Then said I I will not make mention of him as Jeremiah getting discouraged that's Jeremiah the weeping prophet that's Jeremiah his knees were becoming weak that's Jeremiah his feet were becoming tired that's Jeremiah his voice was now to be silenced that's Jeremiah it appears now he was giving up you will not give up somebody there said you will not give up then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Take the word in. And let when the word comes in, the fire will begin to burn again. It says, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. He began the work again. You begin afresh. You begin with zeal. You begin with power. And you begin with passion. And you'll do the work of God fruitfully, purposefully in Jesus' name. Point number two now. The courageous zeal of unrelenting saints. Courageous zeal of unrelenting saints. The saints of God, those who are born again, those who are children of God, and they know that these are the calling the Lord has given them. If you are zealous, you will be courageous. Without courage, there can be no zeal. The zeal will die out if there is no courage. It tells, let's go back to John again. John chapter 2, reading from verse 17. John chapter 2, verse 17. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. And you know the story that you know went before that. It was a story that demonstrated the courage of Christ. And it's a story that showed that he wasn't weak at all. You see, Christ's zeal was not passive but active. Christ's zeal was not worldly wise. You know what it means to be worldly wise? You're thinking in terms of the world. To preserve your calmness, to preserve your life, to preserve your friends, and to preserve the business partners, play it cool. Go slowly. Even if you feel different inside your heart, inside your mind, pretend. Act as if I agree with you. You cannot beat them, join them. Act like them. That's being worldly wise. And that's compromise. But to see the Lord Jesus Christ, his zeal was not worldly wise, but heavenly focused. He focused on heaven. What does heaven think of this? What does heaven say of this? His zeal was not hidden, but visible. The people that say, I know I'm zealous, I know I'm passionate, but I don't just want to make any public show. I just want to keep it invisible. That wasn't the zeal of Christ. Not hidden, but visible. His zeal was not self-conscious, but God-conscious. Well, you are too conscious of yourself. My position, my dignity, my honor, the appreciation of the people for me and they are singing my praises when you're self-conscious you're not be zealous because your life will be kind of a, will be tailored by all the people around you but in the, in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ his zeal was not self-conscious it was God conscious his zeal was not dodging responsibilities dodging responsibilities there's a problem over over there in that area of the temple and they are selling something there and they shouldn't be selling that and you know that you are in charge you should go there and stop that thing but they will not go there they are coming by this other side where there's no problem and then they sit down over there and turn their faces that side so that I will not see where the problem is. And if anybody challenges me, I'll say, ah, any problem like that? 
Where was that? I was in the auditorium. I was in the hall. I was sitting there. They said the problem was so bad. Oh, oh, no wonder. No wonder. I wasn't there. You see, there are people, when they're not zealous, they manage themselves in such a way that they dodge responsibilities. But in the case of the Lord Jesus, in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't dodging responsibilities. He was responsible and dutiful. He was not sacrificing the truth at the peace, uh, uh, to be at peace with error. It was not sacrificed. The truth he knew. All those Pharisees did not have that truth, and they were perpetrating error and false doctrine. You know? If Jesus wanted to be at peace with them, at peace with error, he'll just close his eyes to that, so that, and then the truth will go underground. But Jesus Christ was willing to sacrifice his own comfort to preach and to preserve the truth i pray that that same zeal the lord will bring back to every worker every minister in our church in jesus name you see the, as you look at the people nowadays that person is a pastor there that person is a coordinator there that one is an overseer there and uh, they have studied the situation and they say, don't rock the boat, don't push anything, and don't uh, create any sin. Because you see, this is the way the people go now. The church will become nominal. The church will become formal. And the church will not have what it takes to hold on to the standard of the totality of the revelation of truth. When we're so careful, don't go there, don't touch that, don't say that, don't move there, don't do that, don't challenge anything. The church is going to go nominal. This church will not be nominal. And it's going to take the zeal of everyone. It's going to take the passion of everyone. And it's going to take the commitment of everyone to say, we're going to stand where we'll stand in Jesus' name. It, look, at it, uh, this, uh, this is a believer's zeal. What the Lord wants, to do, wants us to do, that's exactly what he did. Number one, steadfastly obeying God's word. Steadfastly steadfastly with all your heart and with all your mind steadfastly obeying the word of god because it's not just about preaching if you're preaching it and you're not practicing it if you are telling it but you cannot live by it in your personal life in every area of your life that's no zeal that's no zeal if we're going to be zealous we will number one steadfastly obey god's word number two constantly fulfilling God's will constantly fulfilling God's will I know that this is God's will I know that this is God's standard I know that this is God's expectation and because I know that zeal demands that I will constantly fulfill that will of God number three earnestly defending the truth of Christ's gospel earnestly Honestly, it's not like, you know, in a sleepy way, in a dull way, in a way that is, uh, you know, not even recognizable or not known that we say we're defending the truth, but honestly, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all the skill you've got, and with all the ability the Lord has given you, with all the fire of heavenly zeal upon your life, anywhere, anytime, everywhere, every time, you are earnestly defending the truth of Christ's gospel. Number four, sacrificially spending all to spread the gospel. Sacrificially. You are not saying, uh, this far I can go. In spending my strength, in spending my time, in spending my money, in spending my treasures, in spending whatever I have, I'm going to manage sin. I need to save this other one for the rainy day. But no, you're sacrificially spreading, spending all to, sp to spread the gospel. Number five, wholeheartedly doing good works to save as many as possible. Wholeheartedly, with all your heart. You're not coming with half of your heart, half of your mind, and, you know, almost like you're sleeping over the work, but 
with everything you've got, you wholeheartedly do the will of God, do good, good works, so that as many as possible will be saved. Number six, perseveringly and patiently enduring the cross without compromise. Enduring the cross patiently. Enduring the cross without complaining. Enduring the cross perseveringly without ever looking back. Number seven, purposefully burning and shining to lighten the path of others who are walking in darkness. Purposefully, you're shining the light. You're revealing, exhibiting the zeal that you ought to have. Actually, when we're saved and when we're sanctified, this is what God does for us. Look at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. Titus chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Tell me the rest. Tell me out aloud. Tell me like you are going to do it now. Zealous of good works. That's why it sanctified us. You cannot say, I'm, I'm sanctified and cold. I'm sanctified and apathetic. I'm sanctified and lukewarm. I'm sanctified and dull. I'm sanctified and yet we have to push here in the work of the Lord. No, sanctification brings zeal. It says that Jesus Christ gave himself. He gave up himself, he sacrificed himself, he died for us so that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Sanctification makes us pure and peculiar. And then it says, zealous of good works. That's you. That's me. And you'll be like me in Jesus' name. Job. Chapter 23, Job chapter 23, courageous zeal. Reading from verse 12, Job 23, verse 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Uh, that's zeal. You see, there are people, what they think of is, so-and-so is my breadwinner. So-and-so is the one that is always giving me something. So-and-so is the one that is uh, giving me physical energy. So-and-so is the one that is giving me shelter. And if I offend him or if I do anything he doesn't appreciate, if I'm too serious with the gospel, if I'm too serious with the word of God, if I'm too serious and committed and zealous to the work of evangelism, what if they withdraw their head? What if they withdraw everything they are, keep, they are giving me to make my life comfortable? Because of that, they go down in their zeal. But Job said, no, I esteem the word of God better, greater, more necessary, more precious than my daily food. I pray you'll be like that. I said we'll be like that in Jesus' name. That is courage, not to think of what you lose. When you obey the word of God, that is courage not to think of what people are going to withdraw away from you. When you stand on the word of God. Look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. We're reading from verse 6. The courageous zeal of unrelenting saints. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall not divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. You'll be courageous. I said you'll be courageous. Uh, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from each to the right hand. Or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law 
shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have, tell me, good success. Verse 9, have not I commanded thee? Don't you know where the commandment is coming from? Don't you know this is coming from your heavenly Father in heaven? Don't you know this is coming from our Lord Jesus Christ? Don't you know the command, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? The command, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The command, don't take anything away, don't, don't add anything. Don't you know who has commanded you? Because you know who has commanded commanded you then you says be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do everything the lord has commanded joshua was able to do that you'll be able to do that have not i commanded thee be strong and of a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee the lord thy god is with thee and is greater than all the opposers in the world. Is greater than all the troublemakers in the world. Is greater than all the persecutors in the world. And is greater than the people that want to stop you. You will be unstoppable. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. It demands courage. We are going to have that courage. We are going to look at Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 19. Acts 26, and we're reading from verse 19. In Acts 26, verse 19, where, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. That's the courage and the zeal of Paul the Apostle being expressed right there. But have showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. We need courage and we need earnestness, we need passion to do everything the Lord has commanded us to do. We will in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. He says, we shouldn't slack back, we shouldn't decrease, we shouldn't minimize, we shouldn't slow down. But whatever is good we have been doing, and whatever the Lord has commanded that we have been doing all these years, he says, do it more and more abound more and more for ye know what commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus we will continue because it tells us in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 Hebrews chapter 5 reading from verse 9 and be made perfect talking about Jesus our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord, and the coming King, being made perfect, he became the author of sal eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. There are some people that talk about eternal security, and the way they talk about that is that however you live, whatever sin you keep on committing, however you are disregarding the word of God, if you have raised up your hand, sometimes and you have accepted jesus and you said you believed on the lord jesus then you are forever saved look at that verse again being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation 
unto which people? How do we describe the people? Tell me out aloud. They obey him. All that obey him. Those who do not backslide. Those who don't go back into sin. Those are the people that have eternal salvation because they keep on obeying the Lord. Not obeyed in the past. They obey even to the present time and they keep on obeying. First John chapter 2. In First John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And he that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they, the people that have come into the kingdom. They have received the gospel. They believe on the Lord. And they keep on doing the commandments of the Lord. Zealously, wholeheartedly, and steadfastly, and perseveringly, sacrificially. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in and through the gates into the city. For without outside are dogs, and sorcerers, and all mongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and who servant lovers, and makers a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life. How? Freely. Verse 18. For I, this Jesus Christ, talking to his church, talking to everyone in this church, every minister in the church, every member in the church, everyone that claims that he believes the Lord, and is part of the body of Christ. Here is what Christ is saying. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, any man shall add unto these things. Making their personal opinions equal in weight, in value to the scriptures. If anyone will add his own opinion his own idea, his own philosophy, and his own peculiarities into the word of God, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, and if any man, whatever his position, if any man, whatever his authority, and if any man, whatever his uh, way of thinking, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, you wonder, why would will people take away from the book of the prophecy of the word of God? Because if the word is condemning them, they don't want to preach what condemns them. Somebody has two wives. And then he's uh, preaching, or maybe he has one wife at home, and then another wife, another woman somewhere. When he comes across the word of God, he takes that away. He keeps quiet about that. He's silent about that. Why? Because if he preaches that, he thinks he's condemning himself. Whether you preach it or not, it condemns you. 
and in some people, if they're not holy, if they're not righteous, if they're failing in their personal lives, they cannot talk about holiness, follow peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. They will not want to touch that area because that's like an eyesore to them. That's why it says, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. When somebody's name is out of the book of life, if he dies in that condition, where does he go? Hellfire. Because he's taking away from the word of God. He's editing the word of God. He's subtracting from the word of God. He's saying, no, it's a modern time, this modern age. If we keep on preaching everything, if the word of God will not have a crowd, the people will not come. And if we want people to come, don't you want this place to be filled every time? Okay, if you want that, stop preaching this, stop preaching this, stop preaching that. Will you do that? What's your gain? Even if you saw a crowd, your name will be out of the book of life. I pray your name will not be out of the book of life. That's all the amen you can say. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He wants us to continue to be zealous, zealous for the truth and zealous for sound doctrine and zealous in presenting that truth in preaching that truth in upholding that truth and living by that truth the lord will help every one of us in jesus name point number three now the conquering zeal of unconquerable servants is the zeal that makes us to conquer you will conquer i will conquer evil will not conquer us compromise will not conquer us the modern day kind of compromise will not conquer you or conquer me or conquer the church in jesus name but if you lie down there reptiles will be walking over you if you don't stand up and if you don't have some fire and some zeal and some passion and you're lying down there everything will be crawling over you there because you give yourself the chance to be crawled over but if the fire is there the fire will be there if the zeal is there all those things will not crawl upon your life in jesus name we're coming back to john chapter 2 reading from verse 17 and his disciples remembered that it was reaching the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Those are the people that conquer. When well, you follow the Lord Jesus Christ and you allow the zeal, the passion to come out and to be revealed. And then you come to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Are conquerors in the house today? Those who are more than conquerors, are you in the house today? Look at him from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Which one of those things will separate you from Christ? Look at verse 36, as it is written, For thy sake... For thy sake, because we are zealous, for thy sake, because we are following his example, for thy sake, because we are preaching his word, for thy sake, because we uphold righteousness, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depths, no any other creature here on earth or coming from the sky shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray nothing will separate any of us from the Lord in Jesus' name. 
Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You are not here by accident. God knew all about you before you came into this world. And before you even became born again, and before you became a member of deep and hypeable church, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Amen. Thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Amen. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. That's how to be courageous and zealous. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Do you have his word in your mouth? Is it in your heart? Has the Lord taught you anything at all? Are you really born again? Do you have Christ living in you? The living word, as he lives in you, you will do what he has called you to do. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Verse 17. In verse 17, thou therefore gird up your loins, arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city. I've made thee this day an iron pillar. I've made thee this day brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. He will deliver you. Nothing here will hurt you as you preach the gospel and as you do it zealously in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 10, moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words don't subtract, all my words don't diminish, all my words don't seed, don't take anything away. This one is tall, that one is difficult, this one is not popular, this one you will not receive, don't do that. All my words that I shall speak unto thee, Receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears and go and get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Verse 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them a warning from me. You will do the will of God. Let's look at Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7. We need to have concrete zeal because there are people that will not want you to speak the word that the Lord has given you. Amos chapter 7 verse 12. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos, 
O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, it is the king's court. Then answered Amos and said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was a prophet's son, but I was a hard man and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Amos said, This is not of my doing, it's the calling of God. God called me. And he told me, go speak unto the people. And you are telling me, don't speak this, don't speak here. Go to the other place and go and talk to them. In verse 16, it tells us now, Amos, in verse 16, Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Exactly what he told him not to do. He said, here is the word. Why did he do that? Look at Amos chapter 3, verse 8. Amos chapter 3, verse 8. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? The Lord has spoken. The Lord has given us the word. How can we keep quiet? We must preach, we must proclaim, we must prophesy. Publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof for they know not to do right says the Lord who store up violence and robbery in their palaces and then he continues speaking to them as uh, the early believers and the old testament uh, preachers of the word as they were faithful and zealous and passionate about doing what the lord has given them to do we're going to do the same in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts chapter 8 reading from verse 1 and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. They were scattered, the believers. They left their homes. They left their communities. It wasn't possible for them to remain in those places. Persecution scattered them. Real serious persecution. Tense persecution. Intense persecution. Severe persecution scattered them. And they were not, you know, complaining and mourning. See what has happened to us now? Because of zeal, because of passion, because of faithfulness, and because of our integrity and because we said we're not going to compromise see what has happened we've lost our houses we've lost our land no what were they doing look at verse 4 therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing tell me out aloud we will preach the word i said we'll preach the word whatever is happening out there in the world this is the time to preach the word. They were scattered abroad, and it says, even though persecution scattered them, they kept on preaching the word of God. They were not lukewarm. They were not fearful. They were not timid. They were not vacillating. They were not spineless. They were not nerveless. You see, a servant who is a lukewarm servant, a servant who is a fearful servant, a servant who is a timid servant, a servant who is a vacillating servant, spineless servant, noble servant, who is conquered by the slightest difficulty is of no use to the master. 
a servant who is afraid of the world is commissioned to save. The Lord has sent us go and preach the word to them. The people were to preach the word to were afraid of them. The people were to heal were afraid of them. The people were to deliver were afraid of them. The people were to command, repent and come to the Lord were afraid of them. How are we going to preach the word he has given us? A, a kind of intimidate, intimidated servant who is intimidated by the a people is supposed to reach his com, uh, ordained to convert. How are you going to reach out to them? You are intimidated. You are afraid. You are frightened of the people you need to tell pointedly to repent. A person who is not confident before the audience is commanded to perfect and prepare for heaven. It's of no use on earth. It's of no use to men. It's of no use to the Almighty God. What's the Lord telling us then? The Lord is telling us, be zealous and live a useful and fruitful life. Be zealous and pursue the heavenly vision. A life without zeal is a useless life. A life without conviction is a worthless life. A life without a heavenly calling is a, a, kind, is a worthless life. A life without fire, a life without fervency, a life without focus, a life without faith, a life that's always cringing, always bending, always giving up. Today, it gives up one percent of his conviction. Tomorrow, another challenge comes, it gives us another one percent. And tomorrow, an, another challenge comes, it gives up one percent, one percent, one percent. In one year, you'll give up everything. You'll become totally empty and totally worthless. But when you stand up, when you say, The Lord has called me, and greater is he that is in me, that is than he that is in the world, you'll be a great asset in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. But you know, a life without something to live for, a life without something you know, to die for, a life without quality contribution to God's kingdom will be a worthless life. You're asking yourself, what kind of life do you have? And what kind of ministry do you have? And what kind of zeal do you manifest? We must manifest zeal so that the work of God will prosper in our hands. I said the work of God will prosper in our hands. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium when they both went together into the synagogue of the Jews. They so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. They spoke convincingly, they spoke passionately, and they spoke zealously, and they spoke perseveringly. They so spake that a great multitude believed. But look at verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews turned up the Gentiles and made their hearts evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore. Because of the persecution, long time therefore. Because of the challenges, long time therefore. Because of the difficulties, long time therefore. It's telling us that persecution will not drive you away from the work of God. I didn't hear amen. Opposition will not drive you away from the work of God and will not sap your energy and take your strength and take your zeal away. It said, because of that difficulty, because of that challenge, long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. The same will be true of us in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Time start off. Preach the word. The days are difficult. Preach the word. The challenge, the challenges are almost insurmountable. But preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. 
for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own laws shall they heave to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but watch thou in all things watch that your zeal the level of your zeal does not go down watch that your passion is not drained out watch that your consecration is not forgotten or swept under the carpet watch that you don't become afraid because of the challenges of the day watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry i will i will you will every one of us will do it in jesus name john chapter 9 reading from verse 4 i must work i must work somebody there say it aloud i must work the works of him that sent me i must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night comes when no man can work you will work with zeal you will work passionately you will work perseveringly you will work uncompromisingly you will work with all your strength you will work i will walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night comes when no man can walk rise up and give yourself fully again to the lord let the zeal come back let the passion come back let the strength come back let the revival come back revival of evangelism revival of holiness revival of obedience to the lord let the fire of revival the fire of zeal burn in every heart i will work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night comes when no man can work